Well, when life gives you lemons, we make lemon pudding. I'm Rachel and I'm Joe and we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos and if you're new to our channel welcome here on two crazy ketos we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos we talk about various keto topics and then every Monday we go live on keto on the couch we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week you can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook Instagram and Twitter and we have a website which is two crazy and that's where you're gonna find all the different recipes now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So I'm in the middle of going through a lot of dental work and what that means is for the next month or two, I'm going to need some very soft foods because I'm not gonna be able to chew a lot of steak sometimes. No, you're not, but have no fear. Keto Chow is here and today we're actually here with a keto chow pudding. Yep, now this pudding is actually based off of our original banana cream pie recipe, which I will leave a link up here. And that uh, was really good, but I've made some modifications to it to bring the carbs even lower, to bring the fat down a little bit and have it like full of protein. And that original banana cream pie recipe, that was actually based off of Maria Emmerich's protein hard boiled egg pudding, which I have a link for down below in the description. Now, what I really like about this is it's super versatile. We're gonna make a lemon meringue pudding, but you can really turn this into any flavor you want. Which is what I like about it because there's a lot of different varieties of keto chow. Yeah, now I do wanna say, uh, I have tried this with a lot of different variables. I've tried different liquids. I've tried different sweeteners, uh, different variations of the amount, and also with some different protein powders. And though we are using Keto Chow, it will work with some other protein powders like Quest protein powder, but I'm not really keen on the ingredients in there. And it will also work with the Equip chocolate protein powder. But I do wanna say with the Equip, that is a beef protein, so the texture, does come out different as well as the taste. So I'm going to strongly suggest you use Keto Chow for two reasons. Number one, it's a really good milk protein isolate and also you're getting all of the vitamins and nutrients. In fact, each serving has one third of all of the vitamins and nutrients that you need for the day in it. And I am really using this as one of my main sources of nutrition as I'm getting my dental work yeah, done. Yeah, we don't want to push pause on your health and your diet just because you're having this mouth surgery. Yep, now there is a link for Keto Chow down below in the description and if you use that link, you will get 10% off of your entire purchase of anything that is not a subscription. So uh, let's get into the ingredients we're going to need. First thing we're going to obviously need is some Keto Chow. And like I said, you can make this any flavor you want, well, not any flavor. I Don't do chicken. I wouldn't do chicken soup or taco yeah. or something Tomato, like that. Tomato, basil, even. Any of the sweet flavors. Yeah. Um, you could do it with chicken. I don't know how that would taste, uh, but the chicken is made with a milk protein, so you could technically do it with chicken. We're using lemon meringue today. Feels like spring. Then you need some almond milk or any uh, keto-friendly milk. So I've also tried this with water. It does work with water. It actually works very well with water if you were using Keto Chow, again, because Keto Chow is a milk protein, so it remains the proper consistency. Right. And almond milk is mostly water. Uh, you can also use canned coconut milk, but you're gonna use a different amount and that is linked down below in the recipe card. Then we're going to need some kind of an extract. Now, since we are making lemon meringue, we're gonna use a lemon extract. We're gonna use lemon extract, but if you're making pretty much any other flavor, I would go with the extract that goes along with that. So in most cases, vanilla extract, same exact amount. Uh, but you know, for example, maybe you're using, I don't know, salted caramel and you can find a caramel extract if you wanna up that caramel flavor, just whichever one you want. You're just gonna use two teaspoons of it. Then we need some eggs. We're actually using a dozen eggs. Thanks, ladies in the back. 
and then we're going to use a sweetener. Now, you're gonna see in the recipe card down below, I'm using a liquid sweetener, and that is because I'm trying to keep the total carbs as low as possible because my plan is to eat an entire batch of this every day when I can't choose something like steak or chicken. And I just don't wanna have all of those total carbs for two reasons. Number one, I don't want total carbs. And number two, I don't want the gastric distress that is gonna come from eating about a half a cup of powdered erythritol. Right. But if you are okay with that, you can use powdered erythritol and it is all linked in the recipe card below. Um, I suggest either liquid sucralose if you don't mind sucralose. And if you're having keto chow, you probably don't because there's some in there anyway and you only need a few drops or liquid stevia. You can also use liquid monk fruit. The amounts are in the recipe card. And that is everything we need. Are you ready to get into this? So ready. Now I did forget to tell you, this is a super easy recipe to make. How easy is it? It is so easy, even Rachel can make it. Yay! So long as you can scramble eggs. Oh gosh, <laughs> I think I can do that. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We're gonna use scrambled eggs. So the first thing you need to do is take your dozen eggs and what we like to do is mix them in a blender because you get a really good blend and you don't have any of that like where the whites and the yolks haven't completely mixed. Just throw them in a blender for a couple of seconds and go ahead and mix them up. We're using 12 of them and then you're going to scramble them. Now when you scramble them, what you wanna do is get a soft scramble. You don't wanna get like, you know, the eggs in there where you get the brown down below or right. anything like that. Well done. You wanna basically pour the eggs on your pan and while you're pouring them on, you're gonna use your spatula and kind of keep moving it around and you're gonna stop when they're just slightly underdone. So you should have a little bit of wetness to those eggs. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull over our blender and the first thing we're gonna do is take 12 ounces of almond milk and put it in the blender. Now I have tried this a lot of different ways. It works best if you put the liquid in first. To that, we're going to add two teaspoons of our extract. And again, since we're making lemon Ooh. meringue, we are going to use lemon oh, extract. Man, that smells good. Uh, we're gonna use liquid sucralose today. So if you're using liquid sucralose, you're gonna put in about 10 to 12 drops. Now this is going to be to your personal preference. So you might want to start out with a few drops blend everything up, give it a taste, and if you feel it needs more sweetness, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, also to let you know, so this is the sucralose that we use. It is linked in the recipe card, but I find these drops are hard to count, so I transfer them over to one of these Where little bottles. really tiny. And just so you know, this bottle is two years old, and it will last you a really, really long time. It really will. It is actually like sucralose, it's like 30% sucralose and 70% water. And even there, one drop is equal to two teaspoons of sugar. It so it gives you an idea of it. Blow your face off. And then finally, what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and turn our blender on low. You don't need the top. And then we're just going to dump in one serving of keto chow, whichever flavor you're using. Again, today we are using lemon meringue. And all you wanna do is get that all mixed up and then we're gonna turn off the blender. Now, one thing I do wanna say when it comes to the blender, you don't need to use a Vitamix, but I would suggest a good blender. Don't go buy like the $10 blender at Walmart, especially if you're doing this with hard boiled eggs, which is how Maria Emmerich does it. Yeah. Um, which you can do this with 12 hard boiled eggs. The reason we don't is number one, it sets up faster if you use scrambled eggs. And number two, it does have a really bad sulfur smell until the next day. Ooh, it's bad. Now that you're gonna do that, you've done that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your dozen eggs and put them into the blender. And again, you can see that this is like a soft scramble. We're gonna put the top on. You definitely wanna put the top on this. Put your top on. Go ahead and turn it on low. Oh, I'll wait and then what you're gonna do is allow it to start going and then just slowly turn the speed up and you're going to blend this until it's completely smooth.
Okay, so we've had this blending for about a minute and you'll see right around the edges in the Vitamix, it's still got some chunks. So what I like to do is just take a spatula and kind of give it a mix so that whatever is around the edge moves to the inside and then we're gonna go ahead and blend it one more time. Okay, so now that you've done that, what we're gonna do is put the top back on. Put your top on. Turn it on low. And then again, just blend it for about 20 more seconds. Okay, you are done. You can go ahead and turn it off completely. At this point, your pudding is done. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna transfer it over to a bowl to allow it to set up even more and allow it to cool down. Now, this step is mandatory if you use hard boiled eggs because it will be much more of a liquid consistency and it will smell like sulfur. Yes. So all we do now is just pour this into our bowl. It's already decently thick. Yes. But you can see how it's slightly runny. So now that we have it in our bowl, we're gonna go ahead and put our lid on it. You wanna have this in an airtight container so it doesn't pick up the smells in the refrigerator. We're gonna stick it into the refrigerator. I generally like to leave it overnight, but at least go until it's chilled. But it, I think it's better the next morning. Me too. Okay, we have another batch here that I made last night and this is completely ready to go. But one thing you will notice when you dig into it, it does, get very, very thick. Yeah. It's almost got like a little bit of a cheesecake <laughs> kind does. of consistency. It's very thick. So what I like to do, if you want, you don't have to do this, is now what I do is I take an egg beater. Just kind of fluff it up. And we kind of get it even smoother. So we're gonna put the egg beater in there and you're gonna start on low and then you're gonna just increase the speed and blend this for like 30 seconds to a minute. And that is it. And you can see, I mean, it, your beaters stay pretty clean. And now Lovely. all of a sudden, it's, it literally has like the snack well consistency. Very right? nice and whipped. You want to go ahead and try this? Yes, please. You want to dink it? Yeah, well, I got to get my spoon. Dink. dink. Mm. This is so lemony. Very lemony. You can actually add more lemon extract if you want to up the lemon even more. It's lemony snicket. I did try adding the true lemon packets in there, but I didn't like it. I almost felt like the true lemon just, I don't know, it didn't work quite right. Maybe you'll have different results. Let yeah. us know down in the comment section. Uh, let us know down in the comment section, what other flavors would you make? Um, we've tried pistachio. Pistachio is really, really good. good. Uh, the lemon meringue is really good. Raspberry cheesecake is the good. The raspberry cheesecake came out really good, but the color was uh, slightly off-putting because we had the old one before yeah. they changed the way they're Have coloring the it. stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. <laughs> also, it works very well with chocolate peanut butter. That is probably one of my favorite ones. That's gonna be today's video. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video that I'm gonna put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.